Welcome back, everybody, to the North Dakota State Bison Dynasty, better known as the Tyson Mack Coaching Career. We are here for the regular season finale. We're going to be playing the final three weeks of the season here for the 6-3 and three Bison. And we have a massive game here, Week 11, against UNLV, the Las Vegas Rebels, who currently have an edge. Currently, Kirk Herbstreit is taking them, which is a little weird, but we have two prospects visiting. This is going to be a massive, massive game for us. On just scales of all things. And rather than bog down right now before we have this huge game by looking at scouting and all that stuff, we will take a look at that next week. Because without further ado, we have to get in this game against the Red Raiders. We have to get a win. All focus is on that. Let's go. So a quick scouting report of UNLV before we get into the game. Clearly, they are very, very good. The third best rushing attack in all of college football. Top 50s in pretty much every category. But a really good defense. 10th in points allowed. 15th in rushing yards allowed. When you look at it, they're our top players. You have to worry about L. Thomas, the running back. Almost 1,100 yards over double-digit touchdowns. He can catch it. He can run it. Let's hope our defense is up to the task, but we have to rely on Easton Stick, who is on a hot streak, to get us through this game. Right now, we're just running it down their throats. We have ran the ball every single play. We've got about 70 yards. We saw their top-ranked run defense. It's nothing. We got Bruce Anderson who's searching. He's sniffing. He's hungry for that 1,000 yards on the season this game. And that's a huge touchdown run right there as our offensive line is just dominating the line of scrimmage. This running attack, man. They can't handle us. 20-yard touchdown run for Lance. That's over 100 rushing yards in the first quarter. The Bison want it. This is like one of those things, you know, a real boss knows when a boss comes into the room. Just by looking at him. You know a fake boss? UNLV with that record, this fake record. Our record holds up. We're the top dogs in the Mountain West. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, 25 yards, Bruce Anderson. The rushing attack and our defense. Full kudos to our defense getting the job done here early. What a run, though. Look at that. Great blocking. 21 didn't stand a chance. Too much speed. All right, first and goal, Bruce Anderson looking for his third score of the half. We get great blocking on the outside from the tight end. Three yards, too easy. Oh, Phoenix Sproles. There you go. We can pass it on him, too, if we want to. Oh, what a pass on the run to Kaparis getting smoked. That is that little flicker. Of NFL caliber quarterback Easton Stick getting destroyed. Finds Kaporis that deep downfield, that accurate of a pass. What a play. And what a win. This one is zeros going on the clock. We had our backups in, our second team in as North Dakota State rolls UNLV 42 to 7. Can we look at that? 226 yards on the day for Bruce Anderson, three touchdowns. He had like 70 through the air. Rest on the ground. I mean, we ran the ball down their throats. Just what a day. Not a career day. I think we actually might have had a better week a couple weeks ago with Bruce Anderson. But the fact that this was supposed to be the marquee matchup. Maybe the team that gets the edge down the stretch for the Mountain West. And it was just so one-sided. You know, you got you to gotta take your hats off. Plus, this is the North Dakota State that we expected coming in. We expected this team to be a team that runs the balls first. And can you let Easton Stick do his thing off play action, which is what we saw here today. Uh, outside of really the one bad interception for Easton Stick, this was as complete of a point as we've had all year. Uh, and again, man, you know, we're starting to get some clout. The fact that our offense was able to play like this, Tyson Mack, we're getting some reputation around us. We got one upgrade to spend as we pop out of this and get ready for our second game of the triple header. We got a bye this week, coming out the tails of a massive victory as we move to 7-3. and three. And with the good news of us getting this little, little token, little little skill point that we can use to upgrade our skill tree, which, you know what, you, you know, we, we have a lot of options to work on just to, to re completely round out our game. Uh, what I feel like we should do is help our QB out here and get the plus one throw power, plus one throw accuracy. I think that's pretty overpowered. But there is bad news as we, you know, kind of hint a little bit at the quarterbacks. We have got, unfortunately, locked out for Tua Degavailo's brother right now. I mean, we're within the amount of points that if uh, Kleiman can get the lock break, we might be able to get back into that. It's, I'm still shocked that Middle Tennessee is leading for him. We didn't need a quarterback. It was more so, you know, it was just surprised that we're on his list. 
But uh, things there have kind of worked out, uh, you know, haven't worked out as well. Uh, our wide receiver front is looking good, though. I, I don't know if we'll ever be able to flip Chris Young back, who looks like he still wants to come to our school. But there is that uh, the whole conference thing that's breaking his commitment. But we got Anderson, we got 76. Everything else is pretty much, you know, we need some more, um, you know, guys that want to come in for visits and stuff like that. But this is a big one. Benjamin Clayton, five-star, number one corner. We are currently in the lead got a 20 point lead over North Carolina so we're staying here on 500 because we need to get a lot better in the secondary and being able to add him and Goddard and Mike Taylor would go a long way but more so him as he's the face of this defense and look white lightning we got a new white lightning baby in Benjamin Clayton so it'd be really nice if we can land him and that'd be the good news of getting locked out from Talia Tagovailoa Coming off that bye, we are here at week 13 for another conference game against the 1-9 Utah State. I think they're called the Aggies. Um, but, you know, can't let record show anything. They are the better team on paper. And we have a couple visiting prospects, including D-Tackle Sopshire, who without a doubt would be the biggest prospect I think we could land. Look at our offense. We have the number three offense in the goddamn country. Not bad for a guy that's never called plays before, huh? Herbie's taking us in this game. Not a whole lot to preview. Utah State's having a really, really down year, but they have a lot of talent. We cannot take them easy. Hopefully, we can establish a run like we did previously and help to get that rush offense within the top 100. And more importantly, 8-3, and 6-1 and one in the conference. Come on, man. All right, here we go. Facing a third and four. We're never in field goal range, so... I don't know if our coach will let us go for it, but we're going to go screen pass, which is our most successful play in our playbook, and he just, he didn't cut up field. He didn't cut up field like we needed to. The blocking wasn't there. Utah State has a good defense. Come on, keep our offense out there. Coach, head coach, keep our offense out there. Thank you very much, because we cannot, for the love of God, complete a, uh, a field goal attempt. And we're at home. You know, we're at home. We're playing a 1-9 team that has a seven-point lead. Let's go for it. Let's get some momentum. Here we go. Throws a tight end who's wide open. And the worst pass of all time from Easton Stick. That's That was... What was that? That was a worm burn. That's what we call a worm burner because it's burning worms' heads off. Hitting the turf like that. Ah. Fucking terrible, man. Of course, the 1-9 team's going to smoke us. Here we go. We needed this. Phoenix Sproles catches the deep pass. He's wide open. I don't know if it's too little too late, but <laughs> got the band on the run. Unbelievable drop. Unbelievable drop. It, it's what happens, man. It's the cheese. There's a little bit of cheese that comes every now and again. And here it goes. Oh, Trey Lance is in somehow. But, oh, he's just got back spasms. You know, heaven forbid he actually plays a full game, but helps us out a little bit because... Oh, my God, man. Our offensive line, that was unbelievable last week. Didn't sniff the quarterback. Can't block shit today. And there we go. We missed the short field goal. Just get this game over. Just give us this L, and let's get into the final week of the season. Please, save us all the frustration. Oh, yeah. Beats his man and right to the hands of the safety. Fucking unbelievable. Un unbelievable. I'm simming this out. Get me out of this. End the game. I'm not fucking around with this. You gotta, you gotta say we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. So there's no, there's no amount of me being able to, to make my defense stop a one and nine offense. And uh, we, we just fell short at the very end. Oh my God! Look, we almost came back. It's like it was trying to script an exciting ending. Get me out of this game. Let's go to the finale. I don't give a fuck anymore. All right, so I've come to the conclusion right now that I'm going to change the entire entirety that this this video and this series is presented. I'm going to go with a lot more of sim based because it's it's just going too short. I'm going to have to start simming some of these games. Um, we'll we'll go into like a play the moment style, but me actually playing these games, this video already, be, like I have a lot of other shit. This video took me like three hours to do just because I play the games and I usually do multiple games. So we're going to turn it into a little bit of a sim based play the moments, kind of like how we play the rebuilds. And I'm not going to lie, big reason why we do that is this year, because of that bullshit loss, the stupid scripting that they throw into this game, because we only control one side of the ball, that's where the scripting comes in, because we can't do anything. We have zero influence about what goes on on the defensive side 
Um, but we don't even play Boise State. So, there, you know, let's be honest. We already know what's going to happen. Boise State's going to win. And we don't even have an opportunity to play for the Mountain West Championship. So that kind of makes this a meaningless game. Um, week 14 against 3-8 and eight Nevada. And, oh, my God, 3-8 and eight Nevada, right? You wouldn't believe a 3-8 and eight team could beat a, you know, one of the better teams in the conference. Oh, you don't. We just saw it happen last week with Utah State just embarrassing us. So uh, we're going to hop in. We're going to sim that one out. Let's take a quick look here. We got one more skill upgrade to go. I feel like let's just be safe. Let's get all the injuries done so that, uh, you know, hey, how about our star quarterback stops being made out of glass? So let's get in this regular season finale. We're probably, like I said, there's 5% chance we can end up playing in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. But, uh, you know, ultimately we need to start viewing this as it's our coach first, Tyson Mack first, Bison second. We are trying to use this as a stepping stone to get a bigger and better job. So uh, we, just, we just need a good showing here from our offense against the 3-8 and eight Nevada Wolfpack. All right, let's get into this game here against Nevada. See what happens. So in the first quarter, a little bit going back and forth, back and forth. Classic going back and forth. You know what? Another thing that just makes this so brutal is the fact that we cannot make field goals. A huge dimension of any offense isn't working. But we said that we make one field goal, but Nevada goes down the field. Our defense falls short, and uh, they're, they're struggling just to do a whole lot there. I can already tell this would be a rage-inducing game. But nice to see Bruce Harrison get two back-to-back -back touchdowns. They're getting a 10-point lead as the Bison are moving the ball fairly well. We have a couple guys scheduled for visits today, so it would be nice to at least walk away with a dub. But uh, our, our offense here just choking away in the second half. I'm sure at this point if I was actually playing this game because... They're scripting, so this is pretty much the result that was determined before we hopped in. I would have just probably thrown my Xbox out the window and ruined a now like $150 NCAA game. Uh, our offense fell short against Nevada. I'm so glad I've decided to start stimming this to uh, just make my life easier uh, as that is how the regular season is going to fall. Um, it's not great. Not a great way to have the regular season fall, but it's what we're going to have to deal with. As uh, we, let's, let's find out how the offseason is going to shape out. Uh, and what stupid bowl game we're going to be playing in. So at the end of our epic regular season collapse, which is probably going to be the title of the video, um, I guess we could just show you what our recruiting board looks like now as we enter to find out what bowl game we're going to be in. Uh, we've got some commitments that look good. we got Chad Perry. We're still working on him, the running back. It looks like we'll lock him up. Chris Young actually opened back up to us. There is a good chance that our wide receiving core, we're still in it for Brad Owens. We're pretty close with Oklahoma. But we'll get 77 Chris Young, Brandon Forte, and we already got Antonio Anderson committed, which is huge for our offense. Uh, we're currently lead for 72 tight end Washington. We're well in for these uh, two tackles, 68 guards, 68 center. 68s don't sound real, real big to you guys, but to me, we're, my average starting offensive line grades like a 63. These guys here as true freshmen are going to be done. We got Jonathan Bailey, 74 overall defensive end committed, which is huge. We're still working on the D tackles here, 73, Daniel Graham. We got soft We're only 30 points behind uh, Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. Sure. Uh, middle linebacks, we got on Sam Wade and Richard Martin. We got three corners here, Leon Goddard, 71. We're in a battle with Ole Miss. But look at this, 80 overall, the number one corner in the nation, the number one crew. We currently almost have a 3,000-point lead. It's looking pretty Gucci that we'll be able to land him, which will be massive. Um actually lost out here on Tyler McNeil, the safety. But, hey, you know what? The worst thing, maybe the most frustrating thing about the school is we can't make a kicker. There we go. An 80 kicker, David Nelson, uh, number six kicker in the nation, currently leading to get him. It looks like we will. So at least the recruiting class didn't epically collapse like our season did win-loss-wise. So as we wait to find out what bowl game we're in, here is the Heisman race. Elijah Holyfield, the son of legendary boxer of Andrew Holyfield, got the Heisman Trophy with Will Greer, too. I have no idea who Georgia Tech's running back is. You got Jonathan Taylor there and the random Vandy running back. Is we are going to the Hawaii Bowl to take on a former dead UAB program who went 10-3 and on the season. We're still awaiting to find out if we get that number one crew at corner. So that's God, fingers crossed. But we got to get this bowl game. But that will be for the next episode, which will be the bowl game. And if we actually... Get that really big recruit. This is just, I don't know, man. This is, we, the only thing you can title it is epic failure. Rage-induced fail fest to end the regular season with the Bison. The only good news is, is that, you know, like I said, during this episode, I've gone from, hey, let's try to make no, not only North Dakota State good, but make our offensive coordinator good to, 
fuck North Dakota State and the stupid head coach and no kicker and bad defense. We're going to have our number two ranked defense in the country with a OC that got hired that only came with a recruiting background, nothing about play calling. And you know what? I, I, I'm crazy about thinking about this. I'm not sure. I'm on the fence. But if, if the right offer comes around, we might need to say bye to North Dakota State. I, I was planning on being here for two years, maybe three years, really building up my skill tree. But um, I don't I don't know, man. This this season, the failure of this season has left a bad taste in my mouth. Who knows? But we will, maybe, you know, maybe a really impressive bowl game win might be enough to you know show that you know next year is going to be better for Bison and, and commit to the process. But as of it right now, man, I don't know. It's up in the air. What do you guys think I should do? Do you think I should look for a new job or should I stick with North Dakota State? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this episode, though. Uh, short turnaround. I would expect the bowl game to happen uh, in the next couple days, so make sure you stay tuned for that. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. <laughs> Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, when you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not me